Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. I'm continuing my video series on Turkmenistan. This is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Ancient Turkmenistan shows signs of buildings having been melted by that mysterious weaponry that I hope to learn about one day. Even the helmets of the ancient Turkmen are antennas. The most famous tourist site in the country is called Gates to Hell, as if the ever-burning pit is some kind of reminder of what may have happened here in the past. Some have remarked that this architecture is fairly recent, but here's what is called an artistic sculpture in Ashgabath from 1980. The town of Hazer is located in the region of Selikan. Typing that word into Google, I get this. People who look up Selikan are apparently interested in renewable energy, energy sources, and solar energy. This is interesting. If Selikan was all about energy in the ancient past, it still is. Very ancient maps show that Selikan was an island. Today it's a peninsula. It's referred to, by the ancients, as an island of Napta. This is a 1795 map. The relevant area. In 1659, the region is still called Tartaria, and again we see Napta. Napta is a Flemish word for fuel. Even today, it is used across several languages for petroleum. The French Wikipedia entry on Napta informs us that it had a slightly different meaning in ancient times. Pliny the Elder wrote on the nature of Napta. We call this a substance which flows like liquid bitumen in the surroundings of Babylon and Anastasine, province of Parthia. Fire has a great affinity for it, and he rushes towards it whenever it comes within range. This is how it is reported that Medea burned her rival. The latter, as she approached the altar to make a sacrifice, had her crown immediately invaded by fire. It is possible that naphtha oil was one of the components of the famous Greek fire used in the Byzantine Empire until the 14th century. This mysterious Greek fire has been linked to the melting of stone by some researchers. The English Wikipedia page on naphtha has these interesting bits to add. This same substance is mentioned in the Mishnah as one of the generally permitted oils for lamps on Shabbat, although Rabbi Tarfin permits only olive oil. In ancient Greek, it was used to refer to any sort of petroleum, or pitch. The Greek word naphtha designates one of the materials used to stoke the fiery furnace in the Song of the Three Children, possibly 1st or 2nd century BC. The translation of Charles Brenton renders this as rosin. The naphtha of antiquity is explained to be a highly flammable light fraction of petroleum, an extremely volatile strong-smelling gaseous liquid, common in oil deposits of the Near East. It was a chief ingredient in incendiary devices, described by Latin authors of the Roman period. I highlighted the part about rosin, because it was claimed, in my previous video, that this fuel that helped harvest atmospheric energy, was called red gold. Rosin does look like something that could be called red gold. Anyone can easily harvest free energy, but without the red gold of the ancients, some researchers say it's not enough to light up a town was the island of Nafta, today called Hazer, the world center of atmospheric energy production. Another idea. Is Hazer where we get the English word hazard? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. As in so many other desert areas, which, according to my theory, are places that have been bombed or destroyed from the air in ancient times, we find the usual anomalies in the desert. I've shown stuff like this in the US and in Australia, but this is Turkmenistan. There are straight lines that go on for hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles. 
Modern roads were built on top of some of them, but here you see at least 5 straight lines, and only the ones on the far left and far right are roads. These are square grids in the desert of Selikan. The meaning of these straight lines and grids was never covered in history class. Pazer is under the jurisdiction of the nearby town, Belkanabath. In ancient times, that town was called Nefitag, which is translated as Oil Mountain. Is this a mountain they got red gold from? Before that, it was called Nebitag, Nebit being the Turkmen word for the same oil-like substance. All this can be read on the Wikipedia page for Balkanabath. The new name of the town is named after the Balkan mountain range of Turkmenistan, not to be mistaken with a mountain range of the same name in Europe. Balkanabath from the air shows signs of ancient destruction. Take for example, these modern developments alongside what looks like an overgrown or semi-buried grid. I realize this could have many explanations other than what I'm proposing. But seen in the context of similar discoveries throughout this channel, it fits the pattern of an ancient global war that turns certain regions into deserts. I'll conclude this video with a question. What if all architecture around the world is really energy related and it was never just about function or aesthetics? Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.